And that's how you can change the colors of an image and you see that all the other colors are now not being affected, right? So we basically created a whole different image by just using the parametric mask. So last week I made a video in which I said, leave a comment if you want me to do a video on masks. And I've gotten a lot of comments, so that's why I'm doing this video. I hope you enjoy. Okay, we're going to start with the exposure module because this is the most easy way to showcase the first part of this video. Now, if you open up a module, you only see this. You don't see the options for a mask. However, if you go down here, you have the option for a drawn mask, an option for the parametric mask, an option for the drawn and parametric mask. Let's start with the drawn mask and then we've got a couple of options. Now what's good to know is that if you want to know what's being affected in your image, you have a button for that over here. That will show you the mask. So it basically turns the mask on and off, right? Here in the drawn mask section, you can use masks that you have created before. Now, if you never used the mask before, it's going to be empty. Otherwise you will have some options. Then down here, you have the option to invert your mask. So if you're going to make a selection inside your image and you select this, you see that now this is being affected. But if we click this button, we see that everything is being affected except this, especially if you change the mask opacity. Now I'll tell you about this later on, but that's important to know for this step. Right, deleting a mask can be done by clicking your right mouse button that will delete the mask. And now we don't have any masks here. Dark table gives you a couple of options. The first one is the circle one where you can just click it and then you can increase or decrease it by using these things. Now you can also use your mouse button, but I'll show you that in a minute. Same goes for the ellipse tool. If you click it, you can increase the mask, decrease the mask. Let me activate the mask so you can see what we're doing. So you can increase, decrease. Same goes for the feathering. You can decrease it, you can increase it. Now let's delete that as well. And then we have the path tool. Now if you draw a path onto your image, you can close this path by clicking your right mouse button and that will close down the mask. Now, if we're going to delete that right mouse button again and now the mask is gone, right? Darktable has one other option, which is the gradient tool. Now, if you click it, it's a bit hard to see right now, but let's click it here. The gray point is what will be affected and the arrow won't be affected. So if we increase the exposure, you see that now the top half is being affected and the bottom half isn't. The feathering works the same thing with the mouse button. Hold shift away from you, it increases. Towards you, it decreases. And if you just scroll your mouse button, it's going to curve it. Let's reset the module. Let's go back to the mask again. Then we have the feathering radius, the blurring radius, the mask opacity and the mask contrast. Now feathering and blurring, that speaks for itself because if we create a mask like so, we can now increase the feathering to make the transition softer and blur it as well to make it less harsh, right? If we have a mask, so let me double click this, double click this, we can also change the opacity. So we can decrease that or we can increase that. And the same goes for the contrast. We can decrease that, we can increase that. Now, what do these sliders mean? Well, the strength of the module's effect is determined by the mask's local opacity. So feathering and blurring, the mask may reduce the opacity of the original mask. Now the mask opacity slider, so this one, allows you to readjust the mask opacity to compensate. The mask opacity is decreased, so you make it negative, less opaque parts are affected more strongly. If you increase it, however, the more opaque parts are affected more strongly. Now, as a consequence, completely opaque portions of the mask always remain opaque and completely transparent portions always remain transparent. That's to ensure that the regions that have been fully excluded from or included in the module's effect remain fully excluded or included. If you look at the mask contrast one, this slider decreases or increases the mask contrast and that allows you to adjust the transition between the opaque and transparent parts of the mask. So that's it for the drawn mask. Now let me open up a different module so I can show you the other masks. I'm going to use the parametric mask here because this gives us other options. And here we have the gray value. And here we have the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel. And then we've got J, C, 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 and H, C. Now what are these, right? The J, Z, C, Z, H, Z color space is a polar representation of the G, Z, A, Z, B, C color space in the same way that L, C, H is a polar representation of the lab space. So like the L in lab color space, 
The JZ is a representation of the luminosity of a pixel that aligns with how we perceive brightness. However, the JZ AZBZ color space is much better for high dynamic range images and is less susceptible to U shifts rather than the LAB space. So the CZ stands for the slider for the chroma channel and then the H is for the U channel, okay? Now, if we go to the U channel, and that's the reason why I picked this image because it's very easy to showcase you this next step. We can also pick colors. So this is the color range, but if you want a specific color, you can use this color picker and then place it where you want to. And it will show you here where that color is. Now, if we activate the mask and we drag these in, I'll tell you more about this in a minute. You see that only those parts that we want to be affected are being affected. Now you can feather that by moving the bottom slider. So the top slider determines the range and then the bottom slider basically determines the feathering. And as it's stated in a manual, the two sliders can be shown for each associated data channel. So one that works on the input data that a module receives and one that works on the output data that the module produces prior to blending. And these sliders for the output data channels are hidden by default it can be shown using the show output channels option in the blending menu. Now the boost factor can't be used with the U, but it can with the chroma for instance. And that allows the range of values targeted by the parametric mask sliders to be extended. It may be used in scene referred editing where luminance values may extend beyond 100% to target highlights. And that slider is only available for channels where it's meaningful, right? So if we go back to the U one, and we've just used this color picker to determine this color, yeah? You can also use this and that will allow you to select a range of colors inside the image. So I can select this part or I can select this part. Now, why is this useful? It's especially useful if you have the same color, so like blue, but you have different gradients in it. Then it will show you an area where this gradient is being active, right? And then you can move your sliders towards it to make it as narrow as possible. You see? Like I said, we can now feather it as well to either increase or decrease the mask. Darktable has a couple of shortcuts as well. One of them is like C ho while hovering over a channel's input output slider. So this one to view the input output image data for that color channel. You can hit M to see the resulting mask. So that's basically the same as using this button. And then the A you can use while hovering over the A slider to change the display to log mode. All right, so that in a nutshell is explained what the parametric mask is about, right? You can feather it, you can blur it, and I already told you what the mask capacity and the mask contrast does. Now what's fun as well is that in this specific module and other modules where you have like presets, you can find those presets here right but if you go down here and you just click here with your right mouse button you can select the different ones as well so if you click bleach bypass it automatically activates that one now why is the parametric mask useful you might wonder well let's give you an example which is that let's select the orange again because that's very dominant in this image i know that the area where it is is here i'm going to bring this in so that we make sure that only the oranges are being affected there we go so now we have our mask selected i need to know where that color is here in the u tab so i'm going to click this color picker i'm going to place it here and now we see that these dots aren't aligned with the place where this orange is so we can use the node placement for that here we go and now if I drag this up, see it changed to the green. If I drag it down, it's changing to pink. And that's how you can change the colors of an image. And you see that all the other colors are now not being affected, right? So we basically created a whole different image by just using the parametric mask. Now, if you want a certain area, you can use the draw in the parametric mask. It's basically the th same thing. But all you're going to do is just add in a mask which makes sure that only that area within your mask is being affected. So now we see that the eye is being affected and nothing else is being affected. And that will give you a lot of creative control.